This is the alma mater of Kuwaiti-born Londoner Mohamed Mwazi, who's become notorious for appearing in brutal ISIL propaganda and beheading videos. Now he's at the center of a political row about claims he may have been radicalized at the University of Westminster. The government now wants all extremist speakers banned from universities as part of wider guidelines on security and surveillance. Muslims will be unfairly targeted. We believe that the whole debate about this is really uh, keeping the Muslims in mind. Uh, and obviously there is that, it's built on that dangerous uh, understanding that uh, Muslims are the problem, uh, when in fact Muslims and Muslim speakers, imams, are part of the solution. The system favored by the Liberal Democrats and other groups would see institutes of learning free to invite speakers of whatever political persuasion, but that those events would be chaired and moderated and that speakers would be having their ideas challenged and critiqued in an open forum. The Conservatives favor broader guidelines set by Whitehall. If colleges and universities did not realise before what we are up against, they should now. We are not talking about regulating legitimate debate. We're saying we need to do more to stop radicalisation on campus. Critics of the proposed legislations warn against this issue becoming a political football. People who are within the framework of the law should not be banned from making their views, speaking out. And this is more so in universities, which are should be the institutions which allow uh, expression, allow debate, allow ideas to be conversed and to be challenged. The government is being challenged to provide evidence that universities are hotbeds of radicalization in an era where the internet is fertile recruiting ground. If debates do not take place in the open, critics argue, they will simply be driven underground. Amina Taylor, Press TV, London.